My name is Jimmy Beydoun. I'm five foot seven and a half. I weigh 183 pounds and I'm 22 years old. I turned 23 this April. So the last show uh, was kind of unexpected. Uh, I just prepped for about five weeks. It was the Michigan this past year. Uh, half the prep I trained out of my garage because of COVID. I ended up taking a close second by one point to uh, the overall winner in the men's physique division. From here on now, I'll be hanging up the board shorts, switching over to classic indefinitely. So it'll be just classic physique from now. But uh, overall, that show actually went really well. Out of all the shows I've ever done, that was probably the best one. I peaked perfectly. It was just a five week prep, brought my best look. And overall, just very happy with the package. Yeah, and it's just crazy. I just prepped for, I didn't even intend on doing a show. I was just dieting, just getting back into the groove after COVID and everything. How was it like here, especially being in Michigan? I know stuff's been on and off. What was it like training for the show with COVID going on? Uh, the first half of the prep, it was out of my garage. So I had to stick to very basic movements, which I honestly think completely changed my outlook on the sport from here on out. It was a blessing in disguise. I was just doing heavy dumbbell rows, barbell rows, bench press, just the, the very basic movements. And it really brought a different look to my physique. I believe it really matured my muscles in a faster manner than it, they would have matured if I wasn't doing those type of movements. The second half of the prep, I pretty much stuck with the same movements just in a gym trained out of Royal Oak Gym uh, the second half. And about three weeks out of the show is when I really committed to doing the show. I, was, I really wasn't committing to doing any show, but worked out perfect, honestly. Yeah, I had no clue. I was just going with the flow and just enjoying it. And I brought pretty good conditioning and I was happy with the outcome, actually. So I usually split up my arm training. I'll do all my either triceps or biceps first, and then vice versa. Just because I like to focus on one muscle at a time and completely exhausted before moving on to the next. So I started with uh, the row pushdown. Uh, I like it because it trains out the outer head and it really warms up the elbows for the heavy movements. Uh, did four sets of that, working up to a top heavy set. Then we moved on to skull crushers. I like skull crushers because I can really overload the triceps. It's more of a compound movement and I can really get that full stretch. Really trains that long head. Um, worked up to a heavy set of 10 and finished off with a double drop set. I feel like I just need a little bit more overall volume and intensity on in my arm training for them to grow. Uh, after the skull crushers, we moved on to machine dips. Machine dips have been a staple in my tricep training the past few months and they've really responded well from it. Another movement I really feel like I can overload the triceps and it's really hard to break form on that. Could get a full range of motion, good squeeze at the bottom. And again, with that one, worked up to a heavy set of 10 or 12, I believe, and just a single drop set at the end to finish things off. For biceps, we started off, well, I don't always have access to an arm blaster, but when I do, I always take advantage of it. So we started off with just regular dumbbell curls with the arm blaster. I like that because you can't really break your form, and you can really focus on that negative and really feel the biceps just screaming at you. Um, Finish off the last set without the arm blaster just to overload the biceps and just honestly just get a little bit heavier, a little bit more swing out of it. Even though it's a little bit of a cheat curl, I feel like my biceps respond really well to uh, not the most perfect form, you could say. From there, we moved on to a preacher curl, a machine preacher curl. Uh, I like that one because I was really able to extend or uh, contract it over my head and really get that full range of motion at the top of the movement. Again, there we worked with about four sets, working up to a really heavy set. The last set, I just did a single drop set. And then we finished things off with a single arm, kind of like a spider curl on the reverse preacher where it's flat, really was able to fully extend, get a full stretch in the bicep. And was really able to uh, spring it up to my head and really get that full contraction at the top. That's been a staple in my arm training the past three months. I've been doing it every single arm day and I really believe it's the reason why my biceps have came up so far. Um, so the shape of my arms has always been there. They've always looked really good, but I'm, re I'm a really strict trainer. I believe in full range of motion, the heavy basics. Um, I don't like to break form, especially on a muscle like back, 
but I really been just getting a little bit more nasty with my arm training. Not too nasty, but a little bit more as you see like that last set of the uh, dumbbell curls swinging around a little bit just because I feel like able to overload the muscle and they're really responding and I have a really good mind to muscle connection. As long as I'm not doing anything that's going to risk any injury or anything. Um, but they've just really responded really well and my arms have came up more than anything in the past few months. Yeah, so I'm all about just mind the muscle. So that's really been a focal point in bringing up my physique and my weak points is, especially in my back and my leg training, is if I can't feel the muscle firing, basically it's pointless and I'm just going through the motion. So you'll see me uh, close my eyes kind of and take really deep breaths before the set. I'm big on breath control. I believe once you can start focusing, consciously focusing on the breath, that you can really uh, tune into the movement and really get tune into the muscle that you're training and targeting um whereas before i wouldn't really consciously control my breath and i think that is the biggest thing the biggest focal point the biggest factor into improving my physique is just that little bit of extra focus during the training session it's really made the biggest improvement so prepping for a show so this last show it was a rush prep, so I had to kind of vigorously pull the calories out towards the end to really get into condition. I got down to like 1,400 calories. Uh, right now, I'm at about 4,000 calories almost pushing. Um, I did a really slow reverse diet, um, really built the metabolism up. So almost any pound I gain right now is just pure tissue. I'm gaining weight pretty slowly, but I'm... The, the, the scale is going up and food is going up, so it's a really good sign. Metabolism's on fire, constantly hungry, which is a good sign too. Yeah, so very, very slow reverse diet. At most, I'll do one cheat meal a week if my body needs it. Sometimes I'll skip out on it in the week. Uh, besides that, yeah, it's just very, very slow reverse diet, honestly, has been the main key difference in my, uh, in the leanness in the off season. Really let my metabolism build up. So, it started when I saw a magazine cover, it sounds cliche, uh, six years old, and immediately I looked at it and I was like, that's what I want to look like someday. And just genetically, even if you see a picture of me at four years old, always had a really blessed muscle structure. I've always, pretty toned at a four years old, always able to do the most push-ups and pull-ups in the class, so pretty gifted in that aspect. Um... Started weight training around 12 years old. I remember I started watching Branch Warren on YouTube. So immediately I was into that hardcore style of training. I haven't missed a weight training session since 12 years old. I'm almost 23 now, so it's been over 10 years. Uh, honestly, it started with a bodybuilding mindset. Then it turned into training just for football because I was really small and just wanted to get bigger for football. So I really built my base just with all the compound movements, heavy squats, deadlifts, bench press, always really strong. Then after high school, slowly got into uh, competing, you know, just men's physique local show, saw it on Instagram, was interested. It was just an interest at first. Now it's just something I think about every single day. And I believe it's my purpose is bodybuilding, whether it's coaching, helping or competing or just training just for myself. Awesome. Go ahead and talk a little bit about, because a lot of guys don't think this is possible. So, I tell people you really need to love what you do to be able to balance it. So, it started off when I was back in community college. I was balancing it pretty well. I was working on the weekends for my dad. Um, and then... Slowly, when school got a little bit more tough, you know, classes started getting more serious. I actually gave up bodybuilding for six months, and I realized that it was really bad for my mental health. It's something I can't live without. So I got back into it, and I told myself, just like, if there's a will, there's a way. If you want something bad enough, you're going to figure it out. I'm not going to say it doesn't take sacrifice, so I do sacrifice a lot. Um, luckily, I have a really good support system. My family understands uh, 
My girlfriend understands. She's really supportive, really good. Uh, luckily, my mom preps my meals for me. As childish as it sounds, she preps majority of my meals for me with my busy schedule. God bless her. Um, my dad pays all my bills. God bless him. He's really the reason why I'm able to do everything I'm able to do. He pays for my school, pays for everything. And luckily, I have a job I could do my homework at. So I kind of had to set my life up accordingly. It's still not easy taking really hard pre-PA classes, really competitive. Uh, stress levels get really high throughout when the semester gets really tough. Training at night in the middle of the night. But honestly, I love bodybuilding. And with school, it just becomes a privilege instead of a duty. Honestly. Oh, I'm sacrificing a lot. I don't. Pretty much during the semester, I don't have a life. It's it's study, work, eat, train, sleep. Yeah. I don't. I barely have time to. If I see my girlfriend, we're studying. Um, if I'm ever gonna have a cheat meal, we'll we'll go get some food. Uh, besides that, honestly, I sacrifice a lot. If if a big game is on, I gotta hope that the gym has it on at night. I don't watch Sunday football anymore. I gotta study. Yeah. Um, Honestly, yeah. So if there's any sports on, I just, I bet on it just being there on at the gym. And I'm not even focused on it there, focused on the workout, but just sacrificed a lot. I'm a big deer hunter as well. I was only able to go deer hunting with my dad once this year. So even that, I, I got to go once. Yeah. Um, I know. I was honestly, I'm not going to lie. I was so exhausted from the semester. I ended up falling asleep in the woods. Yeah, as crazy as it sounds. Um, and that's another passion of mine. So I do shoot my own venison meat. So... Half the food is pretty much free. Um, well, my protein at least. Yeah, so I eat, I eat venison meat every single day. But, yeah, so I sacrifice a lot. But it's, it's worth it. Awesome. Uh, people you'd like to thank, family, friends, My mom, first of all. My mom is, without my mom, I wouldn't be able to do it. Second, my dad. Without my dad, I wouldn't be able to do it either because he pays all the bills. He's, they both support me. My mom preps all my meals. And they both believe in me. Uh... Girlfriend, too, of course, because she keeps me sane, and she she understands. She understands it means a lot to me, even though she's not really, she doesn't compete or anything. She's not really into it the way I am, but she understands. She gets it. She knows that I need it, because she was around when I gave it up for a, momentarily, and she's seen how my mental health just went downwards. I was just a mess, and they're all supportive, and I'm just thankful for them all. Very, very thankful, because without them... I wouldn't want to do it because it's 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 a it's a people that don't understand how important the support system is. It means everything. Oh no, yeah, I could you could, but like when you live with them and stuff, and you don't want to constantly have people bashing on you and giving you bad energy, and it just gets that's honestly what gets people really stressed out and makes causes depression and anxiety. So whenever I'm feeling any type of stress or anything, they're usually the ones to calm me down which I'm very, very thankful for. Yeah. And like, it's a blessing to be able to open up the fridge and just grab my food out and go right to work yeah. while I'm studying or something before work. That's a blessing right there. Just having the food ready for me, coming home after the gym by about 1 a.m., exhausted, not worrying about having to cook or anything. That's, it's really a blessing. So how's it been, um, I mean, I've worked with your coach for, what's it been working with John? It's awesome because me and Dominic are friends first, so it's not a lot of people will just hire a coach and there's no there's no relationship there or no connection there at a personal level. So set aside the coaching standpoint, we're we coincide at a personal level. We get along as friends, even when I wasn't bodybuilding, we're still in communication a few times a week, texting back and forth, whether it's Instagram or just over text message. And me and Dominic work well together, which I believe is the key factor in hiring a coach. I don't believe there's a better coach than another coach. Yeah, there's more experienced coaches, there's smarter coaches, but at the end of the day, the person, each person has a different coach that they're going to work best with. And it's just, it's a matter of the fact that you just got to find that coach. And I'm lucky to have found Dominic as soon as I did because we work really well together.